So, um, there was a Trump memo, a White House memo, that was just released as part of this January 6th um, commission. Now, listen, I've, I've been clear with my position on that from up front. I largely think it's a waste of time. I know that that's a controversial take in left circles, but let me explain. The reason why it's largely a waste of time is because we already know what happened. I mean, the goddamn thing is on video. So, we know what happened, we know who's guilty, we know who deserves charges, and those people are being charged. Now, I don't want Patriot Act 2.0 to strip away people's civil liberties and to destroy the Constitution further. I want to repeal the original Patriot Act, which was abused in a thousand different ways and did destroy the Constitution in many respects. So repeal the original Patriot Act, don't do another Patriot Act, and don't give the U.S. intelligence agencies and the deep state, for lack of a better term, more money, more funding, so they can continue to lie and they can continue to mislead us and they can continue to enact an agenda that is very unpopular and continue a new Cold War and things of that nature. So that's why I, I thought the January 6th thing was, it's just, it's theater for the public. It's a way, and by the way, Joe Manchin actually admitted this. There was a great article on this where he said, I think it was over the January 6th commission, he says, listen, we got to give the Democratic base something, some sort of symbolic victory, so, and so that we don't have to do any of the substantive policies that improve everybody's life. So why not just, come on, he was trying to get Republicans, just come on board, let's do this January 6th thing, and then we could have the theater and the left get satiated because Democrats can scold Republicans and say, oh, you're so bad. And then, you know, the eyes off the ball and people aren't talking about universal child care. People aren't talking about pre-K. People aren't talking about expanding Medicare. People aren't talking about any of the substantive policy changes as part of Build Back Better. This, literally, this was like the strategy. The strategy of corrupt corporate Democrats to try to, you know, get the left to pay attention to the theater as opposed to the substance. Okay, so the January 6th thing, we have it on video. We know who's guilty. You don't need an investigation. The investigation is watching the videos and going, that person's guilty. Let's find them and let's lock them up because they committed crimes. Okay. Well, um, there is one respect in which I was incorrect about the January 6th commission. I thought, well, nothing else is going to come out of this. We already know what happened. Well, turns out there is one thing that came out of this. Namely, we got this memo which shows the conversations that were being had in the White House um, around the time. And Mark Meadows, who's, who was Trump's chief of staff at the time, um, submitted this email to the January 6th committee and... Look at what it said in the email. It was a PowerPoint slide. Options for January 6th. VP Pence seats Republican electors over the objections of Democrats in states where fraud, so-called fraud, occurred. VP Pence rejects the electors from states where fraud occurred, causing the election to be decided by remaining electoral votes. VP Pence delays the decision in order to allow for a vetting and subsequent counting of all the legal paper ballots. So this is them saying on January 6th, um, have Mike Pence, like, block Biden being approved and certified as President of the United States. And these are the options they're giving him for this. Okay, but I have more. Recommendations. Brief senators and congressmen on foreign interference in the election. So, in other words, do the Hillary Clinton trick and say, uh, instead of saying Russia, say, like, it was Venezuela rigged the election, and so now we're going to brief Republican senators and congressmen and say, there was foreign interference, so you can't approve Biden as president. Declare national security emergency. So in other words, block Biden from becoming president by just declaring there's a national security emergency, so Trump needs to stay in office and delay approving Biden. Foreign influence and control of electronic voting systems. Declare electronic voting in all states invalid. Throw out all electronic voting. I think what they were actually trying to say is all mail-in voting, but they wrote electronic. But either way, they're trying to say... Just don't count the votes that we don't like because certain types of votes went overwhelmingly Democratic. So just exclude those and say, well, that we think they're fraudulent. This is insanity. Legal and genuine paper ballot counts or constitutional remedy delegated to Congress. So these are the recommendations that they're giving Donald Trump about January 6th. And what they boil down to is Mike Pence can and should block the seating of Joe Biden. Here are the ways in which we think he can do that. And here are the ways in which we think you, Mr. President, can take the initiative and you can say we're delaying Joe Biden becoming president. And the scariest ones here are just declare all electronic voting in all states invalid. Nah, they went to Biden. So therefore, we think they're illegitimate. They're fraudulent. So we're just going to throw them out. This is how atrocities happen, guys. It's 
the entire time as you are doing the immoral, unethical, illegal act, you vociferously accuse the other side. They're the ones who are doing it, and we need to just remedy it by doing our tyrannical thing here. That's what this is. Declare a national security emergency? So in other words, they wanted Trump. Mark Meadows was casually floating the idea of Trump going out there saying, there are a lot of questions around this election. We already know that. We've seen all the talk. We know all the problems. We know it's not a legitimate election. Therefore, time to declare a national security emergency until we figure out what the hell is going on. And so I'm delaying Joe Biden being seated as president of the United States of America. This was openly being discussed behind the scenes. We dodged a massive bullet because Mike Pence, for all of his flaws, thought, listen, I can't, I can't go up there in a largely symbolic meeting and be like, I'm not allowing Joe Biden to be seated as president. He didn't have the balls to do that. For all of his flaws, he at least did the bare minimum of like, let's transition power. Um, and the other reason we dodged the bullet is because Trump, honestly, he was just too much of a pussy to follow through on it. He probably felt like, well, what happens if they, if they push back? What happens if I get dragged out of the office in handcuffs or whatever? And so he, he backed off of it. But these things were being openly discussed. There are literal memos about how you can override a democratic election and therefore commit what? Do a coup. This would have been a coup. And I don't want to hear anybody who's silly enough to still buy into the conspiracy theories. You're just wrong. I don't know how else to say it. I'll be as straightforward as possible. We've had over 60 court cases. Donald Trump and his team lost almost every single one. They only won like one case, and that one case was over some procedural bullshit, which wouldn't have changed the outcome of the election and wouldn't have changed the outcome of the state. You had the Arizona audit, which was supposed to be the linchpin of like, see, we'll prove that there was fraud here. Joe Biden increased his vote count in the Arizona audit. You have Trump-appointed judges who looked at the evidence and laughed it out of court and said, there's no fraud here. They were this close to trying to do a coup. It's just the fact that um, Mike Pence had a single shred of integrity to do the right thing and approve the result, and Donald Trump is too much of a bitch to put his neck out there on his own. But... Look, it's, uh, it's scary because it shows you how much our so-called institutions, which are already shredded in a thousand different ways, it shows you how they're just illusory. You know, they, they function on the goodwill of the people to continue to do the kabuki theater. And so virtually every president to this point has been like, yeah, all right, I lost, whatever, moving on. But thin-skinned person with a dictatorial instinct we were that close to that not happening and this end of democracy type stuff here so really thank thank our lucky stars that we barely got out of this one as bad as it was i mean january 6th was terrible the riot was terrible um it could have been a lot worse based on how rabid trump's most hardcore believers are and based on how thin-skinned Trump is and how petty and narcissistic he is, it actually could have went a lot worse. But I, I will say, this does not bode well for the future of American democracy. It really doesn't. Because we're already at this unstable point. Well, Trump just spawned a thousand different um, Trump clones moving forward. And at some point, one of them probably get elected in the U.S. as a Republican down the road. And what happens when we come across a guy who isn't as big of a pussy? What happens then? tell you what happens. It gets even uglier. So there's a wake-up call for a lot of people, man, that's for sure. And um, we were this close. This close. Memos openly discussing a coup. And, you know, really sort of cloaking it in the legal language of, like, serious people talk, you know? And... I think they, they might even be silly enough to believe their own, like, serious person legal talk. So they don't even, they wouldn't even think of it as, like, we're doing a coup. Some of them would, but a lot of them don't. They think, no, we're, we're writing a wrong here. We're writing an injustice of 
Biden stealing the election or whatever. Very, very, very unstable political situation in the U.S. right now, needless to say.